Hey guys, I'm Davey Wavy, creator of the gay erotic website, Himeros.tv. And today I'm joined by sex coach Finn Deerhart and my best friend, Matthew Thomas. And we are talking about gay men and body image because mm -hmm. it is just as hard to be Ken as it is to be Barbie. Mm. So let's get started. <laughs> Truth. Himeros Live is sponsored by Himeros.tv. Himeros.tv is like porn, but better. Hemorrhoos.tv takes everything you love about porn, the models, the cum shots, the fucking, and combines it with authenticity, vulnerability, passion, and real connection. Each video is based on concepts created by a team of sex coaches and tantric instructors to inspire the best sex of your life. Joseph says, Hemorrhoos.tv is the caviar of gay porn. It's time to join the gay porn revolution at H-I-M-E-R-O-S.tv. Thanks for snickering. <laughs> It was just funny. I like it. No, I do like it. <laughs> yeah, I actually don't enjoy caviar, but like I get what he's going at there. Yes, I'm all about mm -hmm. that. It is like it's the top shelf of gay porn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It yeah. is. To so check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Give yourself the gift of high quality, ethically produced mm -hmm. gay porn for this holiday season. Mm hmm. Put the ass in Chris Mass. What you put in comes out. What comes out, you did? What you put in comes out. Yeah, oh unless it God. gets stuck up there and you have to go to the to the mm. ER to get it removed. Well, I guess it still does come out eventually. Yeah. In the wash, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, good to see you. You too. How are you? Yeah. Good. Happy birthday, Matthew. What, today? It was yesterday. It was yesterday. Oh. Mm -hmm. Happy Thank birthday. you. Thank you. You Sagittarius, you? yeah? I am. I am a Sag. Do you know a lot about Sag's signs? Because I don't. I don't know that I know a lot about any of them, but they're fire signs. There you go. Feisty, flirty. Sassy bitches. Mm. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> 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 well, happy birthday. Thank you. How was your, how was your week, Finn? Uh, it's been really good. Uh, oh, two weeks. We haven't seen you for two weeks. Yeah, I know. I've been busy. I've been, it's been really fun. A lot of anything, coaching. That you, anything you care to tell us about? <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, I mean, it's like a catalog of stuff, but um, I coaching a couple the other day, I had like just this moment where I'm feeling really grateful for all this work and, and, and seeing guys be able to connect that are boyfriends that are wanting to, to break through stuff. That was really cool. Mm. And, and kind of seeing them get to this place of like, yeah, we can do this. I can do this with you, you know? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, you know, they're believing in each other instead of like feeling like antagonistic about each other. And Matt, how have you been the last few weeks? I've been good. Just, you know, doing the same old. I didn't get to hear last week. I need to, I want to hear how last week's um, podcast went. Yeah, it was our, it was our longest episode ever. Uh, it was like a little bit over an hour. So it's a commitment, but yeah. it, the guys from Gayish, they're really funny. They get really into it and they're cute. So, but it is so great to have you guys back. You know, last week uh, on that podcast, we talked about the road traveled and mm -hmm. I felt really bad because this is <laughs> this is one of Finn's videos, and I feel like it was the video you were like the most excited to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, you wrote the concept; it was about cruising, um, and it was sad that you weren't there. So, is, is there anything that you want to say about it or add um, something uh, from the heart? Something from the heart. Well, I really pre well being on uh, site for that one was really really cool uh, because. You get to see in real time how the guys responded to having um, the opportunity just to express with whatever came up with them uh, authentically. So that was really beautiful. And also just the idea of traveling around uh, how, you know, guys came into being as gay men in the past and having to go hide out in these kinds of ways, but even still the metaphor around how we travel inside ourselves when we go into these places. And I think it's a really cool multi-layered video so i'm fine yeah. with that i mean it was cool that i i, I was it's nice to be off for a couple of weeks anyway and i'm curious i haven't got to see that episode yet so i'm super excited about watching it oh fun of the podcast matt, matt do you remember when we were matt, matt and i went to the same college do you remember mm -hmm. that um 
one of the bathrooms, I think it was on like the second or third floor of the library was like the cruising location. Yes. Yes, but I, I thought think... that was years before we went there. I remember there was a website we could go online and look up places to cruise on college campuses and it was on the list. Mm -hmm. I think it was squirt.org. I mean, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> doesn't that sound right though? I feel it like very it well could be, I don't remember. But I remember. I do, we looked for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, didn't we go into the library and like watch people coming in and out of the bathroom? Was we that with you? Have. We may have, but okay, I, don't well, I definitely did much of anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've actually discovered much of anything. It wasn't, there wasn't, any yeah, there's not, there, there wasn't a lot going on. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Anyway, it was definitely one of my favorite, favorite videos, Finn. So thank you for helping mm -hmm. us bring it to life. Totally. Yeah. And there's, well, there's more, there's so much more. There's more to come. <laughs> there's more, more to come. <laughs> Okay, so since no Thanksgiving turkeys were fucked this week, um, I, I do want to talk to you guys about, <laughs> about boners uh, and porn. This is something that keeps coming up, no pun intended. <laughs> um, I uploaded a YouTube video about this earlier in the month, uh, and it's funny because we did talk about like a turkey being fucked in a Thanksgiving porn special. Mm -hmm. To me, it feels like the only topic that is taboo in gay porn is a soft penis like that's the only thing that's like off off limits it's like sacrilegious to show a soft cock it's like the humanity the horror of it mm. um and my point in the video was that a lot of people don't realize that the raging rock hard rock hard boners <laughs> that they see in porn are actually the result of uh, <laughs> drugs <laughs> chemicals drugs that are ingested and oftentimes injected literally injected yeah. into their dicks to give them a four-hour boner while while it's being filmed and um then because of that we, we we see these rock hard boners all the time it gives us the unrealistic expectation that in sex that's what happens but that's not real life. Dicks aren't always hard and mm -hmm. you don't need a hard dick to have sex and a soft dick is not useless. There's, there's value and there's pleasure in that. Um, so, but if you watch porn all the time, I mean, that's what you, there kind of is this destructive mentality that comes from it. Finn, we, we kind of dealt with this. This kind of came up for us in Palm Springs in like a really big way. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember that? Oh yeah. I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> one of the one of the models wasn't getting hard, and yeah. like everyone, we really immediately went into this like really anxious space, like including the crew. Yeah. Um. Well, do you remember what our approach was? I thought it was pretty clever. I love that you're asking if I remember it. I'm like, I do remember. I still have the memoir. The um. <laughs> yeah, Davey and I went to buy a dildo, and we're like, you know what? There's more than one way to to dominate somebody, and if it has to be a dildo, then that's what's going to happen right now, and. So we went and picked out a dildo and it was used and I got to take it home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't you even wash it? You didn't even wash it, did you? I washed it. <laughs> yeah. Have you washed it? it? I have used it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually been a nice asset to my uh, collection of things. <laughs> Yeah, it immediately it immediately like changed the mood when we were like, you know what? Like it's it's okay that you're not getting hard here. Like that happens and mm -hmm. it was a very like sub dom scene and I think the model that like wasn't getting hard was like, "Oh fuck. Well, I can't I can't fuck him now and like um, this is like, like it's like their only measure of success is their ability to stay hard during yeah. during a scene." And I don't blame them. I think it's like it's something that the industry, it's like an expectation that the industry creates and the audience too. Like would and you just be, people everywhere, yeah. Like, would you be happy watching a porn where the guys were not hard? I feel like part of me would maybe be not as interested if I were looking for something that was like a rote, uh, you know, thing that I'm looking for. But um, other parts of me that are, you know, a little bit more open now than I was when I was younger about uh, things would definitely be interested. I've been interested to see different stuff. You know, it's like kind of relaxing my expectations on myself and people I might see in a film, you know? Yeah. Well, we've, we've had a few films where the guys haven't been hard at least the whole time. And, um, and I, I, I get comments from it. Like I just wrote one down here. It's like, look, the guys can't even get hard. They're not into each other. Mm -hmm. And like, we know that's not true. Cause like it, like we've all, I think been in situations where either we ourselves or our partner 
didn't get hard, but like that, it's not a measure of chemistry, right? right. Like, I don't know. Yeah, in fact, there's a, it's not a, a condition isn't the right word, but it's arousal disconcordant is a phrase. And you can look this up um, on YouTube or I think Ted, there's a talk on Ted with a sex therapist from uh, Washington. And we get aroused sometimes when we're not even actually turned on or we get turned on and we can't have the arousal response in our body. So there are physiological things that just happen sometimes that have nothing to do with whether or not we're turned on. Matt, I feel like I know the answer to this question already, but do you care if a guy gets hard during sex? Is his hole clean? <laughs> <laughs> that's See, the only that's, thing you care about? But that's true though, yeah? <laughs> no, I mean, for me, I don't really care as much about whether or not he's hard. I think that in the- Do you care if the hole is fresh? That's it. I care, do you care if the hole is fresh? No, but I, <laughs> I think that in my younger years, like having sex and learning, that if somebody was not hard, I thought, oh my God, they're not attracted to me. They're not into what's going on. Mm -hmm. But I think that as I've progressed with sex and learned more and been with more people, and even had certain experiences with, with myself, I've learned that that in fact is not true. Mm -hmm. Like even the things that turn me on, like I, to me now, like I need a little, I need more connection. I need more kissing. I'm just not immediately rock hard like I was when I was 14 years old. Like, mm -hmm. and I think that has to do with me being desensitized by things and then really honing in on the things that I, that actually really do turn me on and just not experiencing something new. So, I don't know. I yeah. agree. I think there's an opportunity for us to change our relationships with boners uh, in porn and our boners in, in real life or lack thereof. Um, be kinder and gentler. It's actually, here. I mean, it's really asking us uh, and it kind of works to the to the to the scene that you're describing in a porn shoot or even in with a with a boyfriend or a sexual experience is asking us to perform less and just like show up authentically mm. more so you know if you just kind of take that off the table as a demand then you can have so much more fun and you'll get turned on anyway most likely if you just don't stress about it because stress is the most challenging thing to you can't like get a boner if you're stressed yeah, and that's and I think that's what what happens in 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 porn set, and I think that's what the drugs do in a porn set is that like <laughs> even if you take a Viagra, like even the belief that this is going to make you hard takes that anxiety away, and then as a result, the model gets gets hard. We're doing a video in Amsterdam um, where it's exploring all the ways to have sex without having a hard dick to to fuck someone with, and. Um, what we're very aware of is that as soon as we tell the models, like, look in this video, we would love for you guys not to be hard. They're both going to get rock hard for the entire video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like as soon as you take that stress, yeah. it's going to be. What do they take to get hard again? <laughs> well, so they in ingest <laughs> like. <laughs> cause I'm, cause I'm like, cause you said Viagra and I'm like, I thought Viagra isn't, shouldn't be used if you're able to get hard. Like I thought that that's, that actually creates a problem where you're like, you have to go to the hospital and like have like- It can. Yeah, I don't think anything that these models are doing is necessarily safe. Like I, I, I don't possible. think they're like, yeah. No. yeah. Mm -mm. Um, but they take like Viagra or Cialis, is that the other one? Or does that, mm -hmm. is that a sleeping pill? That's a sleeping pill. For sure. Okay, yeah, they don't take that. That's <laughs> no, but it starts with a C. It does start with a C. And then the injection is called. Wait, they actually like take a needle, inject something into like. Mm -hmm. Into their penis. <laughs> into mm. a they vein, in... into a vein of the penis. <laughs> mm -mm. Ew, is it into a vein? I don't know. I'm just being silly. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to make Matthew uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm, I mean, no, I'm like holding my penis, like as you're telling me this, like this is because we did. We had a model do it once on on a, a, a video that we did, and like we were all kind of like, like we didn't shoot know. Shoot up his penis. He shot. <laughs> he left the room, and he injected his penis, and he came back, and there was like some blood and his underwear from where he had injected it and his dick for four hours. He had to take like, I think a decongestant a decongestant uh, to like make his erection go down. I, I'm not advocating any of this. Please people don't try this at home. Um, oh my God. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't even know if the injection is made for your penis, but that's what people use it for. Yeah. Who knows? It's for tires. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It yeah. takes a flat. <laughs> so, oh, this is why I love you all. Uh, all right. So, in other news, uh, uh, oh, I uploaded a video to my main YouTube channel uh, on Tuesday. It's a documentary. Mm -hmm. I know you guys don't watch my YouTube videos, but I, I sent you the wow. link to this. Wow. So, this isn't true. Okay. Thank you. How many of these have I been a part of concept wise before they became videos? So you don't even need to see it because you're, is that what you're saying? Mm, no, I'm not. I'm just giving myself credit for how much I've actually been a part of beyond just watching. The process. Okay. She's process. behind the scenes. Exactly. Yeah. I owe it all to you. <laughs> the I, mean, I didn't say all of it, but. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's a documentary. It's 18 minutes long. It's a commitment. And it is, uh, <laughs> it is 18 for YouTube girl for, for YouTube. I'm I've, curious on the back end. YouTube gives me statistics and they show where people tune out relative to another video of the same length. Um, and like, I suspect that this video being 18 minutes, it's actually good. So people probably watch most of it, if not the whole thing. Yeah. So it probably has really good, um, statistics relative to other videos of that length. It is mm -hmm. hard to keep someone's attention. It's I too keep sad. saying, yeah, yeah. But on YouTube, an 18 minute video is, is like a big ask. Mm -hmm. um, do you say it's sad? Well, I think it is a little sad of the attention span loss and reflective of like the immediate like need oh. for novelty. Yeah. But I mean, I yeah. thought I saw it today and I loved it. A and B, I thought there was like a 1.3 million thumbs up, you know, comments. Yeah. 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 People really, it's doing really well. People are really enjoying it. Um, it's, it's funny. So, um, I mean, curious to get your thoughts on it, but the general feedback that I've been getting from people is that they were like, wow, it's, it's really refreshing and like nice to see the person behind the model because mm. I think like porn stars, there's, I mean, no surprise here that they're objectified. Um, and it's just funny that it's surprising for people to be reminded that porn stars are, are humans. Mm -hmm. and that they're complex and like Mac shared a lot about his journey of how he got to where he's at and his vulnerability and um, being adopted and how, um, how that shaped his experience. Um, I mean, I kind of take for granted the humanity and these models because I work with them on a daily basis. And so I see it all the time, but if you're just jerking off to porn content, I guess you can forget that, you know, there's more to these people. What was your yeah, thought? I, uh, I actually had a, a, a reaction like what you're describing um, when I was watching it. It was like this reminder, even though parts of me know this about other people, I know that they're just people or whatever. Um, watching it, I was really touched and I could relate to some of the things that he was saying. And I was like, oh, yeah, they're, they're people. They're not just penises and movements they're like actual people and this is what he's going through and it's really nice for me to see this side of him you know because it also normalizes some of the stuff that i might struggle with you know to have yeah. permission to see all that how was it for you matt watching it i think that i'm actually surprised that people felt that way and maybe yeah. it's just you know having known you and the things that i'm exposed to and that we talk about so maybe, you know, for me, naturally, I may think about those things, but I don't know. Like, I thought it was nice to see that because, you know, getting to know um, porn stars or even just people that we don't really know in another way that on some level we are connecting with is interesting. You know, I if I was attracted to any particular porn star and there was a way for me to go uh, to go online and find out more about them or listen to their story you know i'd want to be more connected to that because you know for other reasons i'm attracted to them or i use them to get off or whatever um so i think it's a cool concept and i'm glad that you're doing it i just i'm surprised that more people aren't making that connection that oh wow they are people too mm -hmm. um but then it's again, because we're disgusting oh. piggish men. That's why, like, oh. just gross. Speak for yourself. Well, I also think that it, it kind of suggests, like, kind of the power that we put on, you know, the 
we give away our power to these um, beings when they're doing their thing behind the camera. It's our assumptions and what we project onto it. Because like you were saying, you know, backstage, that's not really what's going on. They're maybe taking a shot in their dick or they're having a hard time being hard. You know, but the people that are watching it are really projecting this uh, project like perfection onto them or judgment of themselves. And I'll never live up. And these guys are perfect. And then seeing them in a moment where they're real humans is, uh, I think, really helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not to mention that in most porn, like they're playing a character. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like if you have like a favorite actor and you see them playing a role in a film, but then never get to meet who that actor actually is. You know, you just see these different roles being played. Mm -hmm. Does, does having a more complete image of a person or a model make you more into like watching their content and jerking off or being aroused or does it make you does it like knowing the person behind it does it then make you harder to more difficult for you to be aroused for me hands down makes me more interested in somebody models yeah. or non-models yeah hmm. i think it just depends what you're looking for like you're going online you're watching porn you're horny you're looking to jerk off i would say some people probably may not really care but if you're finding someone that you're always looking up and you like their stuff, I think naturally, if there's a way that you learn, you could learn more about them. I, I don't think that would have an impact on people being into what they're doing or I can, I can see, stuff. I can see both ways. Cause it's yeah. like, like I, I like to see a more complete version, like image picture of someone of like mm -hmm. something that's complicated and layered and nuanced, but I can also see people being like, look, I just want to jerk off and, some of the stuff that Max shared was like painful mm -hmm. and like um, it wasn't easy for him. Like, it, it, and then now when you're jerking off, you might, some of that might come up for you and uh, it might, you know, I think in some instances it makes it harder to objectify that person. And maybe you have a harder time just rubbing one out, watching him do his thing on camera. I don't know. True. Well, also, isn't it like possibly like an opportunity to expand, um, you know, to like, is objectification necessary to jerk off and have an exciting time? Not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if that's all I've known, okay. But, you know, the capacity grows and so does my interest and so does my taste. And, and it's not like I've lost pleasure. I've gained pleasure along the way. You know. I, I do. I do think, yeah, the, the, I think there's an opportunity to to change our relationship with 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 porn models, but I, I mean, what I said earlier is that like men are pigs. I I think that's true of straight guys, the way that they objectify women, and I don't think mm -hmm. that I don't think that gay men are are honestly really much better. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking earlier with Matt. I had an experience this week where um, someone, not 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 someone that I'm friends with, but someone that I know in a non sexual way. Um, sent me a message and they sent me pictures. They sent me naked pictures of me that they had seen on Tumblr. And, and he was like, Hey, I just wanted to, to let you know that like, um, these pictures are really hot and like, they made me think of you and they totally like made my day. And, and I was like, well, like, actually, like, that's kind of, like, it's painful for me that these are out there. And, like, I sent them to someone that I couldn't trust. And, like, mm -hmm. I feel violated by having these exist on the internet without my consent. And he just, like, he really, he couldn't seem to to get that. And I, like, wondered if he was even able to, like, see me as a person other than just this object, which he thought was mm -hmm. hot or, um, you know, desirable in some way. And... Like he couldn't, he couldn't, he wasn't clued in at all to the person behind it. And he, and he also knows me outside of, you know, the world of me being shirtless or, you know, parading around naked. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know why I'm sharing that, but it actually does tie into today's video on him mm -hmm. Rose TV, which is titled the bath. Uh, and it's a body acceptance ritual featuring Diego Sands. Um, you guys can watch a free preview on him TV. Um, and in the video, we see Diego get into this like really beautiful like clawfoot tub in oh. the woods. Um, uh, I think we filmed it. It was in Big Bear. Um, and there's this voiceover that's written by Dr. Jalen Ricks, which mm -hmm. 
has you kind of go through this like body by body or body part by body part, um, like has you give love and acceptance to your body. Uh, mm -hmm. And then after you finish the ritual, you'll have no more body image issues. It's really, it's really as easy mm -hmm. as that. <laughs> so, so wrong. <laughs> That's not Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the backstory behind this is that, that studies have shown that lesbians have the best um, relationship with their body, the best body image. Hmm. And then it's followed by straight guys and then straight women. And then last but not least are gay men that we are the least satisfied with our bodies. Uh, the, the studies that I've seen interestingly don't, um, I haven't seen any studies that take trans folks into consideration, mm -hmm. um, just kind of uh, the four groups that I outlined. But my question is for you guys, like why do you think that body image is such an issue for gay men? Why is it so mm -hmm. difficult to look in the mirror and love yourself? Why? Mm. Well, <clears throat> Matthew, do you have? Go for it, please. Um, <clears throat> I think there are a lot of forces that, they interact in that space for one, um, but a generalization that's really true for a lot of gay guys, then I hear this firsthand, and I also see this in lots of research, is just having a general uh, common experience of being rejected or not feeling good enough and like trying to find power in this world and then you know, congregating with other men and a way to vie for power is to have the best body or the best dick. And uh, in our culture as gay men, sex is central to the way that we connect uh, in friendship and you know, in relationship. It's like topic of the conversation over brunch. It's just like, it's so identity oriented. So the body becomes like this piece of capital that guys are really you know, trying to achieve. Uh, and it's like acquisition of power. So. Um, the further away you get from that as you age, it's almost like it it brings back all the terror that guys have lived in when they were younger, when they were trying to get to a space of goodness, you know. So, and if you have it while you have it, when you're in your 20s and 30s or whatever, however long it lasts for you, it can be like a real source of a kind of power. But it's only one kind of power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. like a currency. Mm -hmm. But, but. It's a you know, like, compensation to, to feel good enough and to feel accepted and secure again. You know, like for a lot of guys, they haven't felt secure. And then when you get a good body and you get lots of attention and you get to like have sex finally in, in a way that you've wanted, it can feel like freedom. And so what would but, happen? But why is know? that? Why is that uniquely challenging for gay men? You know, why is it especially difficult for gay men? Well, because we've had more of a struggle than like in, in, in a real visceral kind of way like m oh, many gay men uh so many guys that i talk to it's like you know they've been rejected by their families or they've been um actually targets of violence and it's not always that way with straight guys i mean everyone has their own shit to deal with and to heal but um gay men have had a really significant portion of um yeah, painful journeys. <laughs> yeah, but so have lesbians. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I hear what you're saying, and and yet mm -hmm. lesbians are are the most satisfied mm -hmm. with their bodies, and they've gone through rejection mm -hmm. and trauma. Yeah, so I think there's like I think there's another layer to it. Matt, what were mm -hmm. you gonna say? No, I was gonna say something along the lines of Finn, but listening, but thinking about what you're saying now, it's I think you have a good point because women in general are picked apart in ways. Mm -hmm that men are not. Um, so why gay men fall at the bottom, I'm not I'm not sure. I mean, I guess some part of me thinks, well, maybe it's because gay men are attracted to, or men are attracted to men, and we look at each other and we're comparing ourselves to each other, kind of along the, again, along the lines of what Finn was saying, but I'm not sure. I, well, I think, you, I think you're hitting on it, which is that and again, this comes back to men being pigs and back to objectification mm -hmm. that I think, I think straight guys objectify women mm -hmm. and gay men objectify other men. But we have the unique experience of also being in the bodies that we're attracted to and that we're objectifying. Mm. Whereas like a straight guy might objectify a woman and be like, oh, like, mm -hmm. God, I just love mm -hmm. her big tits. He's not going to look in the mirror and then beat himself up for not having big tits. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're a gay guy and you're really into big muscular pecs and then you look in the mirror and you don't feel like you have that, like mm -hmm. it starts to create this gap. And I, 
no, it's a complete generalization, but like, I, I think men are more likely to objectify. I think they're more visually oriented than, than, um, a lot, a lot of women are, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there's, there's exceptions. Um, so I think that like, because we're objectifying the same bodies that we're living in, it makes for like a uniquely toxic blend. And if you look at like marketing for gay, anything, mm -hmm. there's like shirtless muscles, abs, pecs, like everything, you know, and, mm -hmm. and when you look at lesbian events, like it's not, <laughs> not <laughs> generally not marketed in the same way. Yeah. Um, I mean, it could be a gay hotel and it's marketed with like abs and, and, it's why my YouTube channel was successful when I launched it. It was because right. like I was shirtless in all my videos and like, and people saw the skin and they clicked it and, and mm. then hopefully stuck around because for more than the tits, but maybe not, maybe they just watched it on mute. And <laughs> here we are <laughs> 11 years later. <laughs> I would really like to hear uh, the perspective from a, a, a lesbian that, that, you know, but I also, you know, like there are different forces that, sh that um, affect women versus men. Mm -hmm. all from a patriarchal kind of perspective, but, but truly there are different, you know, things that they might be dealing with. Maybe body acceptance is high for them, but maybe not something else. I don't know. But um, yeah, I think there's different things. They might've just too like rejected a femininity model where women try to style themselves in a certain kind of way um, and say, fuck it. That's not who I am. I'm not going to yeah. be that. That's not going to be me. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a lesbian truly. <laughs> <laughs> do, do either of you want to share a little bit about your your like body image journey and like where where you're at? Sure. But if Matthew goes first, <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm down. Um, sure. Uh, I'd say that like in college, growing up, before college, I was always generally the one that was overweight. I was always the one that always stood out. So for me. Um, I was never, I was never proud of the way that I looked. Either being, either being because I was the only black kid in the neighborhood, the only black kid in school, or um, being the person that was just generally heavier and just didn't look like everybody else. Mm -hmm. So for me, I struggled up through college and through my early twenties, and it wasn't until I think my late twenties where I finally was honestly just like, fuck it. Like, mm -hmm. this is who I am. Yes, I'll work out. Yes, from t I'll eat healthier, but I'm not gonna be in the gym six days a week. Like, I have other things that are important to me in life that I care about and that I wanna do. And while being healthy is definitely important, I I'm just not gonna have muscles on top of muscles and washboard abs. Like, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I noticed that when I started to recognize that the way that I looked was beautiful and great, other people felt that. Like kind of how we talked about in previous videos about confidence. It's that, mm -hmm. you know, if we are confident about our own shit, everybody else's, everybody mm -hmm. else will, will buy in. Are there some who don't? Sure. Um, but it starts with the way that we feel about ourselves and that image that we're trying to put out, that we're putting out or giving to the rest of the world, you know? Um, so you could almost, you could almost fake it till you make it too. Like, even mm -hmm. if you're not confident about your body. Sure. It's practice. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and I've actually, honestly, that is good practice. Sorry. Well, no, I was going to say, I've noticed this, um, or at least what I thought was a characteristic about you for a while. And I've really appreciated and admired that about you is how you um, exuded more confidence and didn't seem to um, maybe give a fuck about some of the stuff that I like really get hung up about, you know, and, and mm -hmm. you've talked about this on the podcast before and I'm just appreciated it every time I've heard you say it. I mean, it's <laughs> funny because, no, but it's like, I used to think about the people that I wanted to sleep with or wanted to talk to and just never felt like I could. And it's funny, like uh, the uh, as I became more confident, the people that I would like salivate over, I was sleeping with or I was going out on dates with. Mm -hmm. What's funny is I found personally that more often than not, what I thought I wanted was not really ever for me. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it all started <laughs> with like just me, <laughs> finding my confidence in myself. 
I, 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 I really don't think that it's, there's any more to it than that. Is it, is it going to work out perfectly every time? Absolutely not. But people need to realize that they matter. They're beautiful. We all come in so many different shapes and sizes and colors. And there's, there's, we should just appreciate ourselves. If we don't appreciate ourselves, don't expect anybody else to. Mm -hmm. And and I think what's interesting too is that like that body image journey, like it's not it's not ever over because there's always things that are changing. And like I'm now 35 years old, and I know as I move into you know middle age and I get older that my body, which I so strongly identify with, is going to start to change in different ways, and that's going to add a whole nother you know element to kind of to contend with and make peace with and accept and celebrate um so it's not like it's not like it's something that just ends like that you just figure it out and then it's over i think it's going to be like an ongoing struggle that that we're all going to have to work with our entire lives oh yeah it's true yeah because it does keep going in a matter of degrees all the way till we age and die so it's um you know i about my own i was when i was a kid i was a real heavy kid and people made fun of me a lot and um i just I had a really hard time with that. And then as a young adult, I like had issues around food. Like I was like, I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to. And I just like starved myself until I got really skinny. And then I finally got into working out and eating right when I was in my 20s. And I felt so excited because then I could manipulate all those like protein, fat and carbs and kind of get my body to look a certain way. And I would do um, photo shoots and stuff too back then. And I would look at pictures of myself uh, where I was shredded and looked like the magazine or whatever that was supposed to look like, but I didn't feel any connection to it. Like I would still feel hard on myself. And um, it took a long time for that to subside. And it comes and goes like now my body acceptance journey, like sometimes I feel really secure in myself because I'm really like, yeah, this is who I am. And I have so much to offer. Maybe I'm not going to be the tallest guy. I have the biggest dick or whatever. That doesn't matter. Like I've been conditioned to think these things are the most important things on the table, but um, if I'm in a space like that where I feel confident about myself, I don't worry about my body so much, but sometimes, you know, I can be kind of vulnerable and like, even with my partner, I'll start to like pick myself apart in comparison to him. And um, if I catch myself doing that, I just know that there's something else. I, I just need to kind of tend to myself more and get back to center, you know? So it comes and goes still. And I'm like almost 40. So mm. I want, I want to read a comment that was left on um, actually it's the YouTube video with uh, featuring Max's story. So, uh, and this is YouTube, which like has, you know, a track record of having really like horrible, you know, <laughs> venomous, nasty comment. <laughs> comments. This right. is, this is so, it's, yeah, it's not known for like insightful yeah. commentary, but <laughs> this is what this person wrote. First, I understand your videos are largely about acceptance of various forms of sexual expression. I love that and I love your point of view that you bring to YouTube. Second, I also understand that you need views and likes to survive and thrive. So that's the reality and I appreciate the, that pressure. But I often wonder what factors you consider when deciding whether and how to include men in your videos who don't typify Adonis level young bodies. Here's my impression. The typical man featured in your videos has a body fat percentage less than half that of the average man. The typical man featured in your videos is also far younger than the average age of your viewership, which is also, say, younger than the average person on this planet. When men outside these boundaries are featured, older men, softer men, they're usually featured in a fetishized manner in a fetishized video about a specific sub-community. And while there's certainly nothing wrong with fetish fetishization, I love many fetishes myself, many men would love to see themselves reflected in non-fetishized ways in a more habitual manner. Any chance you're willing to commit to filming more videos that reflect the body types and conditions that are more representative of the typical viewer? Mm. I would love that. How is that for constructive feedback? It's and like really, thoughtful. It is very thoughtful. Yeah. And I, wow. And what? at the same, well, at the same time, I want to say I am really appreciative of what you're doing too, because you're like doing the best that you can with what you have and you are engaging with all these themes head on. So it's not like you are, you aren't, it's like, Oh, here's a nice perspective to include in your growth, but not like, like you're already challenging all these things in a, in a big way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because I, like, I think the viewer does have a point. Like I do make a, an effort to include um, a large range of, of, 
people and bodies, but I mean, like we featured Norm, who's 84 years old, but it was as like the world's oldest porn star. Like it was about mm -hmm. him being 84. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, like, I, I understand that, that, that feedback and really appreciate it. I think on Himeros, we've really made an effort to include a broad spectrum of men. I mean, Finn, just in the, the projects we filmed in Palm Springs, mm -hmm. you know, we did a, a circle jerk with three generations of gay men. We filmed a video, this really beautiful connective video between two guys where one of them happened to be paralyzed from the biceps down. Um, and we did a pool boy scene where like the pool boy jerked off to a guy that was like in his seventies. Um, and yet, even in those instances, if you look at the marketing materials for him Rose TV, we very heavily lean into the, the Adonis, you know, younger mm -hmm. washboard abs, because that's what kind of pulls, pulls people in. Um, the hope is that once they get their foot in the door, they get, they then get served a wider spectrum of sexiness and they see people who are a reflection of themselves. Um, and it's a different ecosystem because like on Himmeros TV, I'm not competing for clicks or views on a, with an algorithm. You know, we get to do whatever we want on YouTube. You are competing with an algorithm. And mm -hmm. I know from my videos, what thumbnails and which, um, you know, like what gets the most clicks. So it's kind of, it's, it's, this, it's, it's a really complicated dance mm -hmm. to do. And I don't think there's an easy answer. Well, I don't think that people realize how much you struggle with finding the appropriate content and understanding the concept of what you're trying to create. You know, I think that sometimes you had this one idea of what you wanted this to be, and then it's slowly evolving as time goes on. You're coming up with new concepts, new ideas, and things that you want to include. And I, I personally think the content here is a lot more inclusive. Is it where you necessarily want it to be? No, but I think it's getting there. You're introducing people to ideas that and showing them porn in a way that they've never seen before. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, 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 I appreciate um, the feedback and I think that, and, and it's, it's great, but at the same time, I think that you deserve credit for the fact that you're doing things that nobody else is doing. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's easy for us all to you know, give feedback and criticize and say, what about doing this one day, doing that? But <laughs> you're introducing ideas on one site that I've never seen anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and to, to encourage people, uh, this writer, uh, you know, and maybe this man is, but also be part of the change. Like everyone out there that's listening and wanting, it's like not like a channel that shows porn is going to fix all the things that you feel inside yourself. Like we all have to do that and be part of that change and that movement. So bring it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, that's an insightful conversation. Probably one of the more thoughtful YouTube comments I've ever seen in my yeah, like almost it. 12 years of making videos. Um, all right, so let's get to some questions. Uh, this week, we only have two questions. So people, send in your questions. We'll answer them. Send them to Davey at DaveyWavy.tv. Question number one is, I enjoy listening to your podcast. I'm a guy, and I'm not sure if I'm gay or straight. I might be somewhere in between. Any tips for helping me figure myself out? <laughs> I think if you're listening to this podcast, you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding. Yeah, you're going to have like live conversations because I have so many questions too. about what oh my this God, I know. I just want a coaching opportunity. Right? That's a level of technical. Uh, yeah, I don't have that that kind of know-how. Bring them in and like conference them in. Yeah, be a shit show. We can get there. We can barely do this. <laughs> <laughs> Every week. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. Oh, my God. I think for this person, like, why don't they, like, what do you jerk off to? Yeah. What, why do like, you think you're, you're into both? Or if like you jerk way? off to, if you jerk off to men, you're, you're probably, you're probably gay. If you jerk off to women, you're probably straight. If you jerk off to both, you know, I, I think, I think mm -hmm. what you fantasize about is probably a more powerful indicator than what you're actually, your sexual activity is because you might be mm -hmm. gay, but afraid to, but if you're just jerking off and fantasizing, what kind mm. of porn do you watch? 
Yeah. See, but I to that point, I watch a lot of different types of porn, and I watch straight porn from time to time. Mm-hmm. And I can get off on watching straight porn, but I don't want to sleep with a woman. Well, what are you the question though? Yeah, is what are you tuning into in the straight porn? Like, what dynamic is it that you're experiencing? Because <laughs> you're not I like, watch, identifying I as the man porn. fucking the woman, right? I mean, I am. You are identifying as the. Man. I am. Okay. I think you're well. Yeah, and and there's also different. Mm-hmm. levels of gayness totally. like you know i watch straight porn sometimes and i just imagine that that pussy is my hole yeah. and <laughs> and i watch that that big <laughs> dick to stretch that pussy out and i'm just like why can't that fucking be me yeah well i think this is really awesome <laughs> both of, no these two, two sides of this because like it shows you it is different what you practice with <laughs> sexual uh practice is not always who you are as an erotic being and that's really mm-hmm. important to know, like what Davey was saying too, like um, what you fantasize about is is key to who you are as your your erotic theme. And that's how people generate their sexual identity is like from, you know, how comfortable they are with their erotic selves. So look at it like an experiment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It also doesn't have to be, you don't have to come up with like a, yeah. like a label. Like you can just like, as long as you're authentically like doing what brings you joy and what's fun and pleasurable for you, like mm-hmm. doesn't, I don't know, like a, a label is not going to suddenly make everything magically work out for you. No. So, and it may fun. change once you pick one. Yeah. It does. <laughs> yeah. All right. Question number two, I have a confession to make. Oh, <gasps> I love a, love a question wow. that starts as a confession. I can only jerk off to bareback porn. If there's a condom, I just click to the next video. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with me? How can that even be a thing? I'm watching the sex, not participating in it. So why should it even matter? It's not like it feels any different for me. Hmm. <laughs> I'm totally can- guilty of this. I was going to say, I relate to this too. I relate Everybody, to yeah, it. I know. Like, I, I don't, I don't want to see. I think, you know, I have a real, uh, I have an answer about that. Um, that I think is important to note is that for one thing, when he says it's what's wrong with me, that, you know, like that, that that has nothing to do with what you're asking about necessarily. Like when we go to porn, it's like we're going to our fantasy mind. <clears throat> we're fantasizing because we're like contacting elements of us that want to have permission to express. So I think for many people wearing a condom puts them in conflict with this permission to express fully. So it makes perfect sense to me that you may not want to fantasize about that. Um, but that's different from the reality of, uh, of practice too. Like there's a lot of things that we fantasize about because it's um, parts of our being that we don't necessarily want to do. I, I interpreted the, the what's wrong with me to, to more be like, like not that they, I think they're recognizing that bareback sex for them is hotter, but why would, why would it make any difference to watch? Cause they're not participating in the sex. So it's not mm-hmm. personally feeling any different for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, I think the answer is that like, it's because like sex happens in your mind. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it doesn't matter that you're not benefiting from the pleasure of not wearing a condom. Like what you're watching is happening in your mind and, and and that's where the power is. And that's why it makes a difference to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because uh, the, all that, the fantasy aspect of it is part of who you are, even though you're not participating in it in real life, you're vicariously participating in yeah. the experience. It's like me with those big straight dicks, turn up that pussy. I'm like, like, you know, it's happening in my mind. <laughs> my, my pussy's being torn up. <laughs> With those big straight dicks. Oh, I can't with you. I know. This is also a coachable moment, maybe. It sure is. <laughs> well, too bad we're out of time. <laughs> so oh, next week we'll talk about a video called Discover Discovering Discover Your Erogenous Zones. Uh, it's one of my favorites. It's super hot. Finn, where can people get more of you? Uh, FinnDearHeart.com. <laughs> F I N N D E E R H A R T. Awesome. Please do. Yeah, make sure you guys go to himrose.tv to support our work and see free explicit previews. And then you can join, become a member, and watch the full length versions. Thank you guys so much for listening. 
Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Finn. Again, happy birthday, Matt. Mm -hmm. We need Matthew a website. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew wouldn't know how to make a website. We'll get you one. We'll get <laughs> yeah, Squarespace. They can be a future sponsor. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening. And as always, more to come. <laughs>